Hi, everyone. On today's episode of The Convo, we've got a chat lined up with Phil Obendorf of PowerHub. I'm excited because Phil is going to give us his take on where the industry is today and where it's headed from a renewable energy asset perspective. Tune in as Phil shares his opinion on remote work and whether or not it's possible to thrive in a hybrid setting. Hi, Phil. Welcome to The Convo. How are you doing today? Hi. I'm doing great. How are you doing? Good, good. So the idea is we want to get to know a little bit more about you and what you do, but most importantly, why software is vital in the renewable energy space and all about that relationship between the people involved in building that software all the way to the end users who adopt it and how that shapes the industry. So if you were going to take a pulse on the industry today, what's your take? I think the software industry for the renewable space is really kind of going through that seismic shift. Um, there's been a lot of growth over the last few years. Um, the introduction of AI and other technologies that have really kind of brought um, a lot of efficiencies to the renewable space has really, um, I would say, changed the overall landscape. I would say um, overall in industrial technologies, digital transformation has been you know, a big topic for the last probably 10 years, um, really trying to make everything more efficient. Um, and we can look at everything from technical monitoring, uh, predictive maintenance, mm -hmm. contract management, and many of the commercial asset management topics. Um, there's really a lot of ways to both drive efficiencies and also create more revenue opportunities. Okay, so there's a lot to go over, but that's zero in, in about software's role in all of this. So how do the people and the end users work together to improve the industry? Um, so I think what users are really looking for in software is to both take care of a lot of those mundane tasks to make sure they capture knowledge um, within an organization and really to be able to highlight things they can't do on their own. And that could be um, things like obligations and contracts, things um, you know, monitoring the performance of a site and understanding how um, particular string might be doing on, you know, a very large utility scale site. Um, and also dealing with the financials of, of sites. So really where software can help is by making all those things um, more efficient, um, really do a lot of repetitive work um, so that people don't have to be doing all of those tasks. And specifically your software helps uh, asset management, but when we're mm -hmm. talking about those types of assets, we don't mean assets on Wall Street. We mean renewable energy assets. So could you tell us a little bit more about what it's like leading a renewable energy asset management company? Sure. Yeah, I guess at the end of the day, it's very similar concept to what you might think of asset management on Wall Street, because you're really trying to take um, an asset and get the most out of it. Um, the biggest difference is, you know, you're not talking about a financial product, you're talking about um, you know, something that has a physical presence has to be maintained, has to, you know, uh, you need to be able to tweak things and really understand the technology behind it. Um, and similar to like normal real estate kind of asset management, you have a lot of long-term contracts. There is a lot of obligations, you know, one particular asset might have 30 or 40 contracts. You have lots of vendors to pay, lots of ways to generate revenue, and you need to be able to manage all that effectively. So before we dive a little deeper, just in case some of our audience members don't know, can you tell us a little bit more about PowerHub and what you and your team do there? Oh, sure. Uh, so PowerHub, uh, we've been around since 2012. Uh, we focus on uh, commercial asset management within the renewable space. We have a portfolio of wind, solar, hybrid storage um, assets. Um, we have software that will help with workflows like billing, uh, contract management, um, some performance management, and really trying to enable the commercial asset manager to have full control of their assets and make sure that they're really pushing the revenue cycles to be and the cash cycles to be short and uh, find opportunities there. And from what I've understood, you already have a really cool hybrid work setting at PowerHub, right? Mm -hmm. So your team yes. uh, is only required to come in one day per week to the office, which is awesome. Uh, mm -hmm. And now you're taking it a step further. Uh, but before we get into that, from what I've heard, it seems that for some tech uh, companies, innovation suffers in a remote work setting. So how do you manage to maintain effective collaboration, 
while still promoting that flexible work-life balance for your team? Yeah, I think this is one of the biggest topics right now in the tech industry uh, is, you know, what working models work the best. And there's definitely camps that think remote work is better. Uh, there's definitely camps that think in the office is better. Uh, you can hear a lot of talk uh, in the media on this. Um, I'm kind of right, I think, down the middle with this is I do think that in-person collaboration is kind of irreplaceable. Uh, but I also understand that there's a lot of work that we do that you don't need to be in person for. Uh, so getting tasks done, um, just getting work done, uh, I would say can be done uh, very effectively remotely. And then that provides a lot of value, I would say, in the work-life balance. Um, you can be home uh, quicker, less commute time, all those uh, good things, and just being you know, the family balance as well. Um, but I do think that providing time in the office where you can work, you can have conversations, um, even yesterday, I had a great 20 minute conversation, literally when I was going to grab a coffee and that turned out to be the most valuable nugget of the day, I yeah. would say. Um, so those conversations are really happening. So and I guess you I've still plan reading, for those like collaborative moments, like you still do like your think tank course. sessions in person. Yes, of course. And we have, you know, great tools for that, whether it's Zoom or Teams or whichever Slack or, you know, whatever tools you use, um, bring those tools together to really keep all that asynchronous conversations going. Um, and we have a very open and kind of flat organization here. So, you know, a lot of people talk to, um, you know, regularly when needed. Um, and I think the, the biggest trend that I've seen is the thinking that, you know, if you're working on tasks and, and things that can be done, great, doesn't really matter where you are. But as soon as you get down to things like innovation and and really kind of change the world, um, that's where it does suffer a little bit if you're completely remote. Right. Um, and so that is why we've adopted and we'll be staying with the idea of a hybrid working environment where you know we do have an office, it is open all the time. In general, people come in one to three days a week, uh, but we're mandated to come in one day a week. Um, and generally all the teams will come in on the one day uh, which is great because there's super high energy that one day um, you're able to reconnect with the coworkers and then, you know, work wherever you need to work uh, the rest of the time. But it's about to get even better, right? Because from the press release yes. I read, you made a recent announcement that short-term remote work is going to be available to your employees. And the first thing I thought of was, ooh, so if I worked for PowerHub, I could work in a cozy cottage near Algonquin Park, get some hiking in after work. So Tell us a little bit about yeah. that. Yeah, actually, really excited about this because we've had uh, some requests um, over time for people to, you know, take a trip somewhere or maybe work remotely for a few months. Uh, and I think this really provides um, a great opportunity for, for staff. Um, I know uh, everybody knows I love to sail. Um, I wouldn't mind sitting on the boat in the Caribbean and working there for, for a couple of months Definitely. would be fantastic. Um, so... Uh, and, you know, we do have a very diverse group here. Um, we have people that are not from Toronto where our office is, um, and maybe they want to go and visit family for a couple months or or what have you. Uh, we've had requests where somebody's getting married, they'd like to go be somewhere for a few months. Um, and that's fantastic. So um, we had had this happen a few times in the past where we've just allowed it to happen. Uh, but we decided to formalize it into a policy to really make it um, accessible to everybody. Um, everybody knows what the rules are. They know what they can ask for. They know what the what the thresholds are. Right. Because if it wasn't, uh, think, you know, maybe some people would be more hesitant to to ask for something like that. Yeah, and I think that definitely makes it a little bit more inclusive um, and more equal and more fair because um, some people don't didn't know that they could have asked for that, and you know, um, maybe even the managers didn't know they should say yes. You know, so now we this have. Is, a I can just imagine this is going to be so incredible. Like at the end of a year after this program launches, kind of getting some snapshots of where people were working and what <laughs> yes. they gained from those those experiences. They come back, you know, refreshed and ready to be creative and get back to that collaborative state. Yeah, no, I think it's fantastic, and we've already had our first person take advantage of it. Um, and uh, she had, I believe, it was about six weeks away. Uh, she tacked on some vacation. Uh, as well, um, and uh, really uh, uh, a great time with family in uh, Bangladesh. So what about the future? Where do you think this is going to lead? Do you think other companies are going to be following suit in terms of more re remote work options? Um, I definitely think there's a shift going on right now, and I think some companies 
arguing a little bit more traditional, you know, work from the office. Um, and some companies are trying to hold the line um, because it is a big thing for recruiting. People, when they're looking for a job, generally speaking, want at least a hybrid, if not remote option. Uh, so we find it for, you know, for talent management and finding good talent, um, really important to be able to support that. And obviously then we need all the tools in place to collaborate well. You know, we, I think it's important. So I'm planning to keep this um, kind of as our Good policy going. and as our structure for now. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for joining us on the convo. I gave us some really good tidbits on where the industry is and where it might be going. And we're thankful for your insight. Excellent. Thanks very much, Lydia.